Welcome to the Daily Race. Hey, today we are at the end of Acts, very last chapter, Acts chapter 28, and Paul makes it to Rome uh, after a shipwreck, after being on an island where he gets bitten by a snake and, and, and doesn't suffer any consequences, the poisonous snake. Um, he's ministered by, to peop, uh, by people along the route there. He finally arrives in Rome, and it's there that he gets a chance to do what God told me he was going to do, preach in Rome. Uh, even his setup was God-ordained. He, he gets there. He's not thrown in, in, a, in a cell and deep in a prison. He is kept uh, under house arrest with a Roman guard. People are allowed to come and visit him, and, and uh, he's allowed to spend as much time with the, the believers there in, in Rome, uh, preaching, sharing the good news message. Uh, it's just an incredible opportunity here where we see God's providence, God's uh, plan unfold to get Paul from Judea all the way to Rome through trial, through difficulty, through miraculous situations to do exactly what he's commanded him to do. And the, the book of Acts just kind of ends there with, with Paul in Rome. He, he's there, he's under house arrest, he's preaching the good news, he's calling in the uh, Jewish leaders, explaining to them about Jesus and the Messiah. And once again, some of them accept and some of them don't accept, uh, just like every audience that he, uh, he goes to. And then it just kind of ends there. It says this, verse 30. Uh, it says, For the next two years, Paul lived in Rome at his own expense. He welcomed all who visit him, boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. And no one tried to stop him. The end. Well, well what happened next? What, what, what happened to Paul after this? So uh, let me just kind of put together as we're wrapping up uh, Acts here today. And once again, the big themes of Act, the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is guiding and leading the believers to take the good news message everywhere. That God is helping them. That he starts with the command, go into all the world. Uh, you will be my witnesses in both Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. And we see this begin to happen. And we get to follow a couple of people on some of their specific paths, specifically Paul here. So what happens to Paul after this? Well, it's not contained in... We have some clues in some of the letters that Paul wrote. Uh, we have some uh, things that, that Paul expresses in Romans. He talks about a desire to go further uh, west. He'd like to go to Spain to, to preach the gospel. Um, and then we have some early church writers that, that kind of uh, allude to and, and talk a little bit about what Paul did after this Roman imprisonment. And kind of the, the consensus here uh, is that Paul was, was eventually released from this Roman imprisonment. Uh, during this time, though, what did he do? It says here that he obviously uh, had a lot of visitors, but he also used this time to write. It was during this imprisonment in Rome that he wrote Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, uh, Philemon. All of these, these letters he wrote during this first Roman imprisonment. And then he was released. Now, according to, to early church tradition, not, not like church, late, late church tradition, like immediately generation right after that, Paul was able to go to Spain. He took the message even further. He took this seriously. His mission in life was to take the good news message to the Gentiles as far as his legs, as far as the sea, as far as God would permit him. Then, at some point, he's arrested again and brought back to Rome. And it's during this Roman imprisonment he writes 2 Timothy, and it's during this time where he is martyred. He's, he's killed for his faith. In fact, if you go to Rome here today, you can go to... Uh, the, the actual prison where Paul was, was kept. Uh, you can go to the cathedral uh, that uh, claims to, to have, is the burial place of, of Paul uh, there in Rome. And uh, as we look at, at church tradition, that that's where he, he ended his life there. But it's believed on, on a second imprisonment, not this first imprisonment. Imprisonment, he was set free and he continued to do what God called him to do. He was imprisoned a, a final time where he, he, he was killed for, for his faith there. Once again, why the, the second time, not the first time? Roman emperors were changing. It, it wasn't just some, each emperor had a different emphasis, things that they wanted to, to move forward, things that bothered them more. You know, different people are in power, and uh, we know how that goes, right? Every, every four years, every so many years here in the United States, uh, we have new officials in place. We have new government officials all the way throughout the organization, right? And this brings different emphasis and highlights different things. And, you know, sometimes... Things were okay for the Christians. They were just kind of ignored. And sometimes things were intensely difficult for Christians. 
Sometimes it was through the whole Roman Empire. Some of times it was just regional persecution. So uh, we have to remember this is a, a monolithic. The Roman Empire was always one way, everywhere, all the time. There was ebbs and flows, different rulers coming in, different gover uh, governors, regional governors, all this type of stuff. So Paul was, was let go and then later rearrested, and that's where he, he gave up his life. As we think about the book of Acts, though, I think the biggest takeaway is this. Is it the same Holy Spirit in the book of Acts? Is the same Holy Spirit right here and right now? God doesn't change. He doesn't change his character. He doesn't change the, the way that he works in us and through us. He doesn't change the fact that those marching orders, you will be my witnesses of both Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, that, that God is calling us here 2,000 years later to do the same thing, to be his witnesses. Wherever we are, we are those missionaries. Uh, in your communities, in your regions. Sometimes God calls us to go far, or at least be part of work that, that's happening a long ways away. Uh, we are still living out the book of Acts here today. There, there's no, I love how it ends here. It ends with without an end, right? It's just, he keeps preaching the gospel. And that's the end of the book of Acts because the book of Acts really doesn't end. We're, we're still part of the church. The church is still growing and flourishing and reaching further and further regions around the world. Hey, tomorrow we're gonna to start a brand new study. We're gonna be going through the book of Daniel. And if you wanna check out a little introduction to Daniel, I posted that on our, our social media channels. You can check that out. And uh, tomorrow we're gonna to kick that off. It's been great to go through the book of Acts. I hope you've uh, been encouraged. I hope you've learned a couple of things along the way. But more important than that, I hope that uh, where you were 30 days ago or so, that you are more aware more dependent of the Holy Spirit than you were when we started this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we are grateful that we had a chance to take this journey together through this, just these first few decades of, of your church. And God, we recognize that, that we are part of that story. And what a privilege that is, what an honor it is, but God, also what a responsibility. God, help us not to look at this as something that happened, but that is happening and we are part of this. So God, help us today to take a step in alignment uh, with our, our brothers and sisters in you that have been taking this same journey for the last 2,000 years. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.